Number six, the skeleton on the sunken plain. Those who choose to dive off the coast of Aqaba in Jordan might be left with a scary sight. After sinking to a depth of 52 feet, divers will be able to see the wreckage of a Hercules C-130 transport plane. If they swim a little closer and peer inside the cockpit, they'll notice a skeleton of a pilot still strapped in his seat. But why hasn't the wreck been recovered? And what happened to the pilot and his crew? The answer lies in the fact that the plane never really crash-landed into the ocean at all. Instead, the Hercules plane was sunk on purpose at the location to be a tourist attraction for divers. It's also supposed to support the local marine life by acting as an artificial reef. It's not just this plane that divers can find in Aqaba Bay. In fact, over the years, multiple other vehicles, including a Lockheed Martin L-1011 TriStar and even a military M42 Duster tank have been sunk. The project is a joint collaboration between the Royal Jordanian Navy, the Aqaba Port Corporation, and the ASESA, the Aqaba Special Economic Zone Authority. As for the pilot skeleton, thankfully he's made of plastic and not the remains of an actual human being. Originally, he was dressed up in a full flight suit and a pilot's helmet, but now only his headgear remains thanks to the water damage. Although the skeleton may not seem as creepy now that we've explained his backstory, the same can't be said for the wreck of the Hercules. A storm hit Akaba on March 17, 2020, that ripped apart the fuselage of the plane, tearing off its nose and burying its wings down in the seabed. Despite this, the Hercules still remains one of Akaba's top-rated attractions. Number 5. The Dragon's Triangle You may have heard of the Bermuda Triangle, but not many know about the deadly and terrifying Dragon's Triangle. The Dragon's Triangle is found in the suitably named Devil's Sea, known as Ma no Umi in its native language, Japanese. Located in the Pacific Ocean and spanning from Japan to the islands of Bonin in the Philippine Sea, this area is one of the 12 vile vortices found in the world. Vile vortices happen where the Earth's electromagnetic waves are much stronger than anywhere else. Similarly to the Bermuda Triangle, the Dragon's Triangle is responsible for the loss and disappearance of countless ships. Tales of disappearances go back centuries. During the 13th century, the legendary Mongol conqueror Kublai Khan, the grandson of the infamous Genghis Khan, tried invading Japan. But he had to call the attack off after losing 40,000 men and all of his ships thanks to the Dragon's Triangle. Although many thought this was simply a legend, the recovery of multiple Mongolian ships from the water centuries later confirmed this is accurate. More recently, in the 1940s and 1950s, countless fishing boats and at least five separate military vessels went missing within the vicinity of the Dragon's Triangle around Miyake Island and Iwo Jima. A research ship called Kayu Maru No. 5 was sent out in 1952 to try and investigate the disappearances, but it also never returned. The wreckage was discovered later on, but the crew had disappeared. As a result of this, the Japanese government officially declared the area as being too dangerous for marine travel. To explain away these disappearances, the Chinese had a theory about the area, which is where it gets its original name. They believed that dragons once lived under the surface of the Devil's Sea, and they would plan attacks on vessels passing through so they could feed on the crews. But more possible theories have come forward during recent times, although the jury is still out on what the true explanation of this phenomenon really is. Some scientists like Ivan Sanderson think that hot and cold currents in the area lead to the increase in electromagnetic activity that causes ships to get lost. Others believe it could come down to undersea volcanoes that shift around pressures and islands in the area, a theory that could partly explain why the Chinese thought it was dragons at work. The final school of thought on the matter relies on the presence of large amounts of methane hydrates being discovered in the area. When methane hydrate explodes, it causes large amounts of bubbles to rocket to the surface, being enough to throw off the buoyancy of a ship and cause it to sink without a trace. But to this day, no one really knows what lies behind the mystery of this dangerous and terrifying region of the ocean. Do you have any theories? Number 4. The Griffin The Griffin was a ship built by Frenchman René Robert Cavalier, Sieur de la Salle. 
to try and find a route from America's Great Lakes to China and Japan to facilitate trade. But 343 years ago, on its maiden voyage with a shipment of furs, the ship vanished without a trace. After the ship disappeared, rumors started to circulate about what could have happened to the Griffin. Some said that Native Americans boarded the ship, killing the crew and setting it on fire. Others think it was sunk by the Jesuits. But the general consensus was that the ship had been cursed in some way. It was said that a prophet from the Iroquois tribe, Metiomek, told La Salle that the ship was doomed to sink in deep waters. But La Salle himself didn't seem to believe in this theory. He instead just assumed that the crew had mutinied, abandoning the ship to take the valuable cargo of furs for themselves. After the ship went missing, many reported seeing it as a ghost ship on the waters of the Great Lakes during moonlit nights, with the men on board chanting mysteriously, leading many to experience fear when navigating the lakes. A breakthrough was made in 2018, when husband and wife team Stevie and Kathy Liebert managed to track down the wreckage of the Griffin in Lake Michigan's Poverty Bay. 17 years after they found what they think was its bow spirit in 2001. The wreckage, although protected by the state of Michigan, seems to reveal that the true cause of the Griffin sinking was a four-day storm. This explained why the bow spirit was found 3.8 miles away from the rest of the ship. Curiously, it's the only bow spirit that remains in the deeper section of the lake. So, was Mediomic's curse true after all? What would you do if you found yourself on a cursed ship? Let us know in the comments and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Number 3. The Cory Vrecken Maelstrom Whirlpools and maelstroms have been a terror to sailors for centuries. But there is one just off the coast of Scotland that isn't even temporary, but a permanent fixture on the seas. The Cory Vrecken Whirlpool is the third largest known in the world and can be accessed off the coast of Jute. Due to the region's unique geography, the Corryvreckan Gulf finds itself wedged between two islands, with one having a high tide and the other a low one at the same time. As a result, this affects the sea in a way that causes the maelstrom to form. The whirlpools created at Corryvreckan can be seen even on clear, windless days, but it's when the wind picks up in this area that it becomes even more dangerous. With unexpected gales, especially those that come in from the west, the waves around the Cory Vrecken whirlpools can reach up to 15 feet in height, making it a truly impressive but incredibly deadly sight to behold. The Cory Vrecken maelstrom also has a legend attached to it that warns of the dangers of the whirlpools. It's said that a Scandinavian prince once fell in love with one of the island's beautiful princesses and asked for her hand in marriage. The king of the island agreed, but only if the prince Brecken could moor his ship for three days and three nights straight in Cory Vrecken to show his resolve. Brecken agreed to the outrageous terms and headed back home to prepare. He had three ropes of different strengths made, one made of hemp, one made of wool, and one made of hair donated by the maidens of Norway with the belief that their purity would help keep the rope strong. The prince then headed into the middle of the Cory Vrecken whirlpool and moored his ship. On the first night, the hemp rope frayed and ultimately snapped, but the ship and its crew were unscathed. The same thing happened on the second night, when the woolen rope quickly broke down. On the third and final night, it was just the maiden's hair rope that was left. All seemed to be going well until a strong rush of wind broke the last rope. The ship and Brecken were then swallowed up by the whirlpool. Only two souls lived to tell the tale, one crewman and Brecken's dog who managed to drag the prince's body to shore. When the man came back to Norway to let them know of the prince's fate, one of the women who donated her hair immediately broke down in tears, saying that it was her fault since she was not as pure as she had claimed. Number 2. The Salem Express The Salem Express was a roll-on, roll-off ferry, first built back in 1964. It started off life as a French passenger ferry, but by 1991, the ship was in service out of the port of Safaga in Egypt. In December 1991, tragedy struck. The Salem Express was coming back from Jeddah in Saudi Arabia, and its passengers were mostly pilgrims heading home from the holy site of Mecca. As a result, the ship was packed with people way over capacity. In an effort to save a bit of time, the ship's captain decided to take an unauthorized shortcut through the Hindman Reefs, 
something that had the potential to lessen the journey's time by two hours. But a storm formed, bringing with it gale-force winds that pushed the ship into a nearby reef, causing a large hole to open up in her side which started rapidly flooding with water. The Salem Express sank entirely within less than 20 minutes, leaving many unable to get to or even deploy the lifeboats in time. 470 of those on board lost their lives, with only 180 survivors. Over 30 years since the tragic sinking of the Salem Express, the wreck is now a controversial diving site, one that many divers who visit it find very unsettling. Although all of the bodies of those who died have been recovered, there are still spooky remnants of those who lost their lives, including television sets, abandoned luggage, and even a few children's toys. What makes things even more creepy is the fact that despite the amount of time the Salem Express had been under the waves, there was hardly any coral growth on it, as if Mother Nature herself is aware of the tragedy that took place there. And at number one, the Strid. The Strid, in the UK's Bolton, looks like a bubbling woodland stream, but the Strid actually has a 100% mortality rate. No one that's gone into its water has ever come out alive, and more often than not, their body is lost forever. So what makes the Strid so dangerous? It's part of the larger River Wharf, which runs through Yorkshire and is an average of 30 feet across. But when the water reaches the area called the Strid, the river bunches up until it's barely a few feet wide. But if it narrows in such a short distance, what happens to the rest of the water in the wide river? The answer is that it's actually still there, but instead the river has flipped on its side, flowing vertically through the channel in the narrow rocks on either side instead of taking its traditional horizontal course. This change in direction turns the Strid into a dangerous, powerful and deep current capable of pulling people underwater and trapping them between rocks. Anyone unlucky enough to end up in it is ripped apart by the current and the rocks in seconds, which helps explain why bodies are very rarely recovered. The unassuming appearance of the Bolton Strid is what makes it seem even more terrifying. It can look incredibly easy just to walk beside it or even jump across from one side to the other, but the slipperiness of the moss-covered rocks and its tendency to flash flood can easily claim the lives of those unaware of the danger. The earliest known record of someone losing their life in the Bolton Strid dates back to the 12th century. The local landowner, Alice de Romilly's son William, was swept away by the waters in 1152 when he tried to jump across it. Devastated by the loss of her child, Alice chose to donate the land to the monks, hoping that they could pray for her son's soul, which would explain why Bolton Priory can be found just a short distance away from the Strid. The boy's tale was so famous in the area that it even sparked romantic poet William Wordsworth to immortalize it in one of his poems. The Strid even claims lives to this day. In 1932, a 63-year-old painter named Arthur Reginald Smith died while trying to paint this deadly stretch of water. But Arthur was far from foolish enough to make the same decision to hop over the river like its younger victim. Instead, it's thought that the watercolor painter was swept up and drowned as a result of a flash flood. Although it might seem a little far-fetched to think someone could get caught that quickly from the Strid flash flooding, it is all too possible. Barry and Lynn Collett were celebrating their honeymoon back in 1998 and took a walk along the river wharf. As they reached the Strid, the water rose over five feet in less than a minute, sweeping the couple to their deaths. The most recent life that was lost to the Bolton Strid was in 2010, but sadly they are likely to be the last to fall victim to these waters. Legend has it that a white horse will ride along the Strid whenever someone dies there. So if you're in that area and you hear hoofbeats, you best be careful. Which one of these underwater discoveries freaked you out the most? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.